Hello there once again. This is Bobby Figueroa, your faculty in charge, and this is session number two of ComSci 201 lecture series. So in this session we will be talking about propositional logic, which is the first module of the course. But we will be dividing the first module into probably two, three, or four sessions so that you will not encounter information overload. Last time we talked about the course guide and uh, some of the important rules in this course. We also talked about how I will be computing your grades and uh, we also talked about the important dates and requirements that you need to submit. So before we go on with the lecture I have some announcements. The first one is uh, the first assignment which I have confirmed with Junjun uh, has a new deadline it's now October 12, 2014. So in the course guide, I think we put there October 10, but please update that. Now the deadline is October 12. Uh, quiz number one is also available, but you might want to wait for the, the other sessions before you answer the quiz so that you can understand some of the concepts that you haven't. And in the lecture series, we will also be correcting some of the errors that uh, you might have encountered in the module. So we go to the third point. There are a lot of typo errors in the module. I have uploaded a list of, uh, of errors in their corrections already. But I think some of your classmates also detected some of them in the earlier pages. And... Uh, I want to confirm that uh, we will be helping you in updating the module. The module is a very old module and uh, uh, right now we're doing our best to update it and hopefully after this term or during this term we're able to correct all of the, the li of all of the errors that all of the typo errors that the book has and for, for the next uh, takers of CompSci 201 it'll be a breeze for them in, in studying the module. Um, and lastly, I want to remind you that we have another tool for collaboration, and that is Academiax. Academiax is, a, is an online tool for you to use in terms of collaborating with each other and studying together in a virtual space. I know that you are studying remotely, maybe in your office or in your own homes, and you want to connect with other students. You want to study with them like other students are doing in residential campuses. You can do so in Academiacs. This is actually uh, the login page for UP students. I've also created study groups for you and for my other subjects. You can join that because I will just be a lurker. I will not be interacting with you. I will let you interact with each other. But if you don't want me to see your conversations, you can create your own in your own profile. I will be creating another video, a tutorial video for this, so, so that if you're having a hard time uh, creating your own account, you can just watch that video as well. So let's move on to our uh, first topic which is logic. So what is logic? Logic is both a science and an art. It's a science and art of reasoning. So why is it a science of reasoning? First, um, it has principles and laws in which you have, to, uh, you have to assume to be true. And then you can use those principles and laws to prove a certain theorem or to prove a certain statement, just like how you prove a hypothesis in scientific investigation, in the scientific method. And it also involves methods in proving that such a statement is, or such a theorem is true or otherwise. Um, it is also an art. It's an art of reasoning because it will involve skills, creative skills in terms of how to prove a certain statement to be true or how to disprove a certain statement and it also involves critical insight so logic is a science and art of reasoning 
So there are some applications of logic. Why do we study logic? Well, logic is used in mathematics. You need to be logical in proving theorems, as I've said a while ago. And in computer science, it's very useful. It's uh, important. A build, it's a building block in developing algorithms, as I've mentioned in the first session. It's also used in proving correctness of solutions. And finally, it's used for optimizing some algorithms. Uh, you will be able to encounter those examples as we go on in the, in the future sessions. It's also used in the physical sciences to draw conclusions from certain experiments. And finally, it's used in everyday life. It can be used in arguing with your boyfriend or girlfriend, or it can be used in, you know, in certain debates about, about drugs or about abortion, about anything. So logic is very, very important. It's used in everyday life, in all fields, in all walks of life. So there are three types of logic, two of which will be uh, discussed in this course. The first one is propositional logic, which is our topic for this, first, uh, for this session. Um, first order predicate logic, which is in the second module. And, uh, oh no, uh, yeah, it's in the second module. And third is fuzzy logic, which is not, unfortunately, we will not be talking about this. But it's, uh, it's a feature, it's an aspect, it's a subject, a topic of, of some other computer science course or logic course. So what is propositional logic? Propositional logic deals with statements that are either true or false, but not both. It also deals with syntax, which is defined as rules in writing and combining these statements. It also deals with semantics, which is the meaning of these statements. So what are these statements? They are called propositions. So let me define what propositions are. Now, as you can see here, propositions are not obviously this kind of proposition, which is one of my favorite movies. A proposition actually is a declarative sentence. That's the first thing that you need to, to look at. Secondly, it has to be either true or false. It can never be both. So some examples are the following. First is, how are you? Is this a proposition? No, it's not, because it's an interrogative sentence. Next, wow. It's an exclamatory sentence. It's not declarative. It doesn't even state if it doesn't have a, a truth value. Next is sit down. It's an imperative statement doesn't have a truth value. How about this? X is an integer. It is a declarative sentence, yes, but does it have a truth value? No, because we don't know the value of X. We don't, we don't know if they will put a value for X or not. We will not. There is no certainty that X will have a value, so we won't know the answer to this we won't know the truthfulness of this statement. So even though uh, it's a declarative sentence, it's still not a proposition. How about this? 1 plus 1 equals 2. This is a declarative sentence. You can read it as 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And you can say that it's true or it's false, right? So it's a proposition. How about this? Magellan killed Lapu-Lapu. It's a declarative sentence, and we can verify if this is true or not by reading your history books. How about this? It is raining today. So if it's raining today, then it is true. If it's not, then it's false. It is also a declarative sentence. That is why it's also a preposition. So out of the seven statements that I gave you, only three are propositions. I hope this is clear. How about this one? This is the last example. 
this sentence is false. So first we need to look at the form of the sentence. It's a declarative sentence, so it might be a preposition, but does it have a truth value? Is it true or false? Well, we can say, some of you might say that it's a proposition because it has a truth value. Let's see. What if this, what if this statement is true? This sentence is false. What if, what if the statement is true? If it's true, then it's also true that this sentence is false. Then this sentence is false. So it's true and false at the same time. We said a while ago that a proposition can only be true or false, but never both. So this sentence is both. That is why it is not a proposition. Clear? How about SAQ 1-1? So here are the answers already. First is x plus 2 equals negative 6, and x is real. This is a declarative sentence, but we won't know the truth value of this sentence because x is not defined. There is no value assigned to x. Jose Rizal is a ballet dancer. It is a declarative sentence and it has a truth value, we can verify it through history books. So, this is a proposition. How about this? Yes, of course. It is a declarative, oh no, it is a, an, an exclamatory sentence because of the exclamation mark. So, and it doesn't have a truth value. So, it's not a proposition. How about this? It is cold in Baguio City. So we can verify that, and we know that this sentence is declarative, so it is a proposition. Lastly, 1 squared plus 2 squared equals 3 squared, or 1 squared plus 2 squared is equal to 3 squared, is a declarative sentence, and we can verify its validity, so this is a proposition. Okay, so before we end this session, I have one question for you to ponder or even debate on. Um, I'll be putting this out in the course site as a forum. So I'm very interested in how you process this uh, example, how you do your research. You can ask people around or you can, you know, uh, use Google to, to know if this statement is a proposition or not. So here, here it is. We have just experienced an earthquake today. So as you can see, it's a statement with an exclamation point. Um, by default, we, we will treat this as an exclamatory sentence. But I want you to think critically about this example. Is this a proposition or not? So I want your answers in the forum. See you in the forums and uh, Thank you for listening and for watching. I will see you again in the next session. Bye.